I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're standing on a quiet beach. The waves are touching your feet. Only this time, the beach is gone. The oceans have crept into cities, swallowed islands, and rewritten the map of our world. Rising sea levels, fueled by surging temperatures, are not a distant threat. They are already here. And as we wrestle with this growing problem, let me ask you, what if the answer isn't only here on Earth? What if our hope, our survival, maybe even the next great story of humans, isn't just here, but 140 million miles away on Mars? I invite you to consider space exploration and settlement on Mars, not just as a survival necessity, but as our next bold undertaking that will show us how we can still thrive even with severe limits. I'm a materials and physics researcher. I've always been fascinated by solving hard problems. When I gave the stars, the question, what would it take to live up there, has always been more than a passing curiosity. It's a challenge, a puzzle waiting to be solved. At Daedalus, my research group at Georgia Tech, we are working on creating sustainable materials and structures that could be used to solve one of humanity's most ambitious goals, creating habitats for humans on other planets, specifically Mars. Why Mars? Of all the planets in our solar system, Mars is uniquely within reach. It's a six to nine month journey, 140 million miles, give or take. And though Mars is far from welcoming, it's not entirely hostile. It has a bit of water locked in its soil, a bit of oxygen in the atmosphere, and seasons not unlike those on Earth. For scientists like me, it has just enough of the building blocks for life. Imagine waking up, and this is your view from your shelter. You peer outside and see a landscape of red soil, distant mountains, and maybe a sky faintly pink with dust. It's a vision straight out of science fiction, yet with science, we can turn this into reality. This is an actual photo of a Martian dune taken from NASA's Curiosity rover. But here's the hard truth. Getting to Mars is one thing. Building a city there, that's something entirely different. Let's talk about cost first. A rocket launch to Mars could cost more than $200 billion. That's $90,000 per pound of material. To put that into perspective, the cost per pound for a US domestic flight is around 10 cents. Bringing a 100 square foot brick wall to Mars that would be more than $300 million just for the transportation. Clearly, we can just pack up Earth construction materials and ship them. And then there's the Martian environment. Summer nights on Mars can be colder than Alaskan winters. Radiation levels are as if you were living under an X-ray machine 24-7 all year round. Temperatures can swing more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit in a single day. And humidity can reach nearly 100%. In short, Mars is a construction nightmare. <laughs> so where do we even begin? The answer lies in rethinking everything. Materials, methods, mindsets. At Daedalus, we're developing instruments to test how Earth materials behave under extreme, even Martian-like conditions. We stress them, push them to their breaking points. Why? Because understanding failure is a key step to designing for success. 
To build a city on Mars, we need to focus on two things. The materials we are going to use and the structures we are going to design. This is where innovation thrives. Without construction codes or blueprints to limit us, we have the opportunity to redefine the rules from scratch. Guided by three principles. First, structures must, must be lightweight and adaptable. On Mars, every pound matters. Our structures, our buildings must evolve as needs change. Second, materials must come from Mars itself. Using locally sourced materials minimizes the amount of material that need, we need to transport from Earth. And third, artificial intelligence, AI, will simulate and optimize. AI can help us refine designs and predict material performance under extreme conditions. Let's start with structures first. We look to Earth for inspiration. The Eiffel Tower uses crisscrossed beams to create a stiff structure without excess weight. Redesigning this type of lightweight structure so as to offer the advantage of modularity would be ideal for Mars. Imagine applying this concept for Mars, modular materials assembled by robots. In the video, the robots are behaving like bees, constructing a hive and piecing together with precision intricate lattices to form larger, lightweight structures. This type of assembly, where smaller parts are combined together to form a larger, lightweight structure, not only minimizes the material that we need to bring from Earth, but also enables large-scale construction. These structures could be adaptable, reconfigurable, and incredibly efficient. We could disassemble them and reshape them as conditions on Mars and our needs change. But what about the materials we need to use? What can we learn, say, from indigenous Arctic communities who've survived in extreme environments for millennia? They use what's around them, snow, bones, driftwood. On Mars, we would do the same. Martian soil or regolith could be combined with water and 3D printed into bricks, meaning we reduce the amount of material that we need to transport from Earth. We could also mine rare elements from Martian soil using non-pathogenic microbes, such as yeast cells, that we can bring in small amounts from Earth, can grow on Mars, and be used as tiny bioreactors. This is another approach we're exploring in my lab. Another interesting concept is to extract carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere and combine it with locally present ice to create plastics, totally from scratch. NASA is already looking into this. But materials, no matter how innovative, will always fail in ways we cannot yet predict. That's where AI comes in. In my lab, we use AI to model how materials compress, stretch, crack under extreme environments. AI can help us understand the physics of how materials will behave in the hostile conditions of Mars. It can tell us where the weak points are before those points become catastrophic. And here's the most exciting part. Solving problems for settlement on Mars also helps us solve problems here on Earth. The technologies we develop, AI-driven design, reconfigurable lightweight structures using locally sourced materials could transform industries from energy to manufacturing to construction here on Earth. In my group, we use the exact same principles it would take to build a Martian shelter to create lightweight, reconfigurable structures made out of recycled plastics here on Earth. We envision a future where those structures could be used to generate clean energy. Inspired by nature, we overcome limitations of locally sourced materials to create structures with record-setting performance. We also use yeast cells 
to sustainably remove harmful heavy metals from water and produce clean water. But space exploration has always done this. It has always been a driver of innovations. Does this device look familiar? GPS technology has resulted from fundamental research used to fuel the space race. Building a city on Mars isn't just about surviving on another planet. It's about thriving on this one. It's about addressing climate change, resource scarcity, sustainability, right here at home. But to achieve this vision, we need more scientists. We need more engineers. We also need policymakers, visionaries, and anybody who's ready to embrace bold solutions, people like you. Let's aim to go to Mars without luggage. Let's use this as a blueprint for building a better future.